Welcome everyone to Couch Potato Diary, an instant reaction podcast after UFC 306, Noche UFC. Uh, I've been saying it the wrong way the entire week. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, so much like the Canelo instant reaction episode that just went out, uh, this is an instant reaction to what we saw from the Sphere at Las Vegas, Nevada. And the Sphere was going to be the star of the night regardless of what happened. And early on, boy, did that look disappointing, right? We start out and it looks like there's still a bunch of, like, it just, it doesn't look like the most effective use of it, right? And like the the shit talking of the, the, the NHL draft, which it was weird that you were shit talking the NHL draft. Like um, my, my buddy John said when we were watching it, it's like, yeah, like what was the NHL supposed to do? It's a spreadsheet. Like there's only so much you can do with that thing. Um, And, and so th that was what it was. I don't want to get derailed too much. Um, But the at the beginning, it looked bad. Like it looked like there was um like... A, construction equipment or something up and I don't know if that was supposed to be what it was but then they switch to this kind of Aztec look and from there on they put on a fucking show with this thing I don't know if it is super conducive to a live fighting experience um like the the, the, the fights itself it still looked like a UFC card with brighter lighting basically but the all the stuff around it was really interesting um, and the, the kind of presentations and then how they, they, they honored Mexican heritage throughout the night, um, I thought was really cool. Again, the white dude from Canada here. So, um, maybe it wasn't, but I, I, I thought, I thought it looked cool and I thought it was a, a pretty good representation of things. And so it, they, they did, they put on a really, sh a, a really good show. And I was kind of shitting on it when the, the thing first started, but as it got better throughout the night, it's like, okay, no, this is, this is pretty cool. And kind of highlighting everything into it. So I... I don't think this will be the last time that they go there. Um, I don't think this will be an annual thing by any stretch of the imagination. But do I think that this could be a, like, UFC 400 and, and something like that? Sure. Um, do I think that at some point they could do something similar to this with the 4th of July uh, or something along those lines? Yeah, probably. Um, I, I do think that there are certain things that they could try with that. Uh, it was absolutely worth a go, and I, I do think that they did a, a fine job using the sphere once they really got into it. And it was just, it was nice to see a bit of a different presentation to this fight card um, and to a UFC broadcast that for forever have looked the same, sounded the same, been the same. Um, and especially since they've started going to the Apex. Uh, so to have some life in that was really, really great. Um, and, and so I, I think that was... I, I think that that was overall a positive for the Ultimate Fighting Championship and for the entire presentation of this broadcast. I, I thought they did a great job with all of it. Now we get to the fights. Um, in the main event, Mirab Devalishvili with a victory over uh, Sugar Sean O'Malley um, to pick up the Bantamweight Championship. A phenomenal win for Mirab and a really, really good performance. I thought that the... Like, the, obviously, the wrestling was the big part of the game plan. We said that coming in, and it was executed phenomenally. Um, but I do think that there was a different aspect that really set this thing up, that really kind of dictated the pace of this fight and dictated how this fight was going to go. And it was in the first round, O'Malley comes in, and he lands a pretty clean shot, but Marab counters with just this... I am I would have to go back and watch it, uh, but with a pretty good right that came over the top and just a perfect counter... And from that point on, O'Malley, O'Malley looked a little bit different, I will say. He looked, um, the, the, the aggression was gone. It changed the mood of the, mood of the fight like that. And from that point on, Marab was allowed to dictate how the entire fight went and controlled every aspect of this fight. It was a beautiful performance. And I, I do think that a lot of the wrestling, I do think um, that a, a lot of what he was doing, um really did kind of, like, control that whole fight. But I think the moment where it shifted was a great counterpunch from Marab in the first round off of what O'Malley was trying to do. And it really set things up and really set in motion the rest of the fight. And after that, it was all Marab. The takedowns were excellent. And we said in the preview that that was going to be how Marab was going to have to do it. I thought O'Malley was going to be able to do a better job of keeping Marab at distance. But 
once that counter landed, O'Malley was just a little bit trigger shy, and that allowed Marab to get his timing down and get the takedowns. And then, when Marab got the takedowns, my concern was that O'Malley was going to have some issues, or not, um, not, I have some issues, actually. I thought O'Malley was going to be dangerous enough off of his back that he was going to, um, either threaten and potentially win some rounds off of his back, or he wasn't going to allow Marab to get those type of controlling situations that would allow him to pick up round after round after round. That was not the case. Marab's control in the ground was beautiful. He did an amazing job in controlling everything in this fight. A, a, an excellent, excellent work by Marab Devalishvili with the takedowns, um, implementing some work uh, with, with his hands, and then getting enough damage on the ground to get a victory. A really strong performance from Marab Devalishvili, and he is very deserving of a championship opportunity. And then afterward, um, we, we get a, a shot of Umar Namagomedov in the crowd. That absolutely has to be the next fight. O'Malley, it is time to go back to the drawing board, I think, a little bit. Um, I do think th this is not just a product of hype. This is not just a product of the UFC hype machine. This is a talented fighter who... I think can cause some real damage for different um, opposition in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. I do think that there are a few holes in his game that he needs to tighten up, and I do think that there is a plan B that maybe needs to be implemented a few more times when plan A isn't necessarily working. Which brings us to the Women's Flyweight Championship, as um, Valentina Shevchenko is once again the champion, as she picks up a unanimous decision win over Alexa Grasso to win back her championship. It was her 11th consecutive fight in um, the UFC that was for a championship, which is absurd. And that is one of the things we talked about going into this fight, is you have given Valentina Shevchenko about 35-40 minutes worth of information. I just can't believe that she is then going to lose for 25 minutes. And she knew exactly what the game plan was, and she executed it perfectly. It was... Set up the takedowns with your striking, and then control after that. Grasso is a good submission um, grappler, as we saw with the, um, the the neck crank kind of submission that she got to win this championship. But her ability to get up off of the ground was uh, severely limited in this fight. And Shevchenko really showed up. And so I thought this was such a great job of implementing a game plan and executing it to perfection. It wasn't just go in and try to spam takedowns. It was set it up with the hook and then get your entry and get the takedown. Phenomenal work. The one thing I will say is that it didn't need to be varied from at all because Alexa Grasso came in with... I think an entirely different view of how this fight was going to go, and she had no response for this. And so we talk about like, okay, when plan A isn't working, what do you do for plan B? Plan A obviously wasn't working for Alexa Grasso. There was no plan B, and there was no plan to stop plan A for Shevchenko. That was the big thing in this fight, is that Shevchenko was doing, like, I don't want to say it was rudimentary, because it's not, and that sounds way more dismissive of Grasso, who I think is a very good fighter, and of Shevchenko, quite frankly. Um, but... This wasn't this new scene thing. It was set up a tank out with a high strike and then get your level change and go. And that, like, when that works, it works. But to have it work like five or six times is excessive, a little bit. And so I, I thought that this showed a bit of a lack of adaptability to the situation for Alexa Grasso. And, like, I, I think the natural thought is, okay, well, you have to run it back a fourth time. One's one. Uh, each of them a one. And they have a drop. So we're 1-1-1. One, one, and one. We need to solve this thing. I don't know. Last night felt pretty solved. I'll be honest. Um, I, I think that we can move on from this particular rivalry for Shevchenko. Um, and then lastly here, Diego Lopez with a brilliant performance against Brian Ortega. He showed everything we wanted to see from him. He showed the power that makes him so dangerous. And it almost ended things early. And it almost ended things late as well. But he also showed... Um, a well-varied attack and a, um, I would say growth in his game to go 15 minutes with what is, as we talked about throughout the week, the toughest competition that he has faced so far in his career. But again, his use of length, his ability to keep that distance while also landing with some pretty good power as well is a really special thing. He doesn't need it to be like just an in-tight hook or something like that. He, he can land with power at reach, at range, and do that very effectively. I think he is a dangerous, dangerous fighter in this weight class, and it makes him a very fun, fun opponent um, and very fun option for the Ultimate Fighting Championship. 
going forward. Uh, the, the other fights, I, I caught quite a few, but just in kind of glances um, in between the, the boxing that I was watching at the same time. Um, so I'm not going to go too in-depth on, on anything else there. I think we'll just kind of leave it at this one. But overall, um, I love that the UFC tried it. I think they did really well. Uh, financially, they did phenomenal. Uh, $21 million gate is insane. Uh, so bravo to them for being able to pull all of this off and to be able to, 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 to try something new and to do it. And I would love for the WWE to get in there now and get their production hands on all of this. Um, but yeah, overall, a, a, a plus night for the UFC. That's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I will talk to all of you on Monday. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.